everybody, this is Bryce Machine Bates of Team Evil Geniuses, and this is a replay review. Um, this current replay is actually a Zerg versus Zerg against one of my fellow practice partners, Complexity Gosu User. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into the game. All right, let's go ahead and get this started. Now, ZBZ, uh, particularly on Cloud Kingdom, actually tends to be a, a pretty uh, good map for playing defensive ZBZ. The reason why, actually, uh, happens to do with these ramps leading into the natural and the third. It makes it very easily defensible uh, with early infester play, spine crawlers, spores. So you'll tend to see a lot of three base uh, hive play ZBZ, which is something that, that's rather new to the matchup. Um, so th there's also a lot of mind games. A lot of people actually under defend these uh, ramps and are still losing to like your sort of standard three base roach timings. Um, uh, but I'd say on the whole, the most uh, common build for the matchup at the moment would just be three base Ling and Fester on this map, just because you can use spines to defend any of the composition or possible uh, positions, and that early infester tech really allows you to grab that early hive and it's just a better composition uh, altogether. So as we see here, going ahead, uh, finish my nine overlord here, uh, whereas my opponent, Ghost of Users, actually opting for uh, a 10 pool opening. Now this is something that's becoming more and more common. Uh, it's almost a uh, blind counter, so to say, to the standard uh, 15 hatchery, 17 gas, 17 pool. It's not a guaranteed win, but it uh, will actually, you know, it, for the most part, put you very far ahead as long as you have good enough to control to be able to go ahead and pick off those drones early on with zerglings. And you don't let yourself get caught in the mineral line. Uh, unfortunately for him, that's actually uh, not the build I'm opening with. Uh, so that's why it's also very important that you're able to go ahead and switch up your build and your play. Uh, and I've opted for the 14 gas, 14 pool opening. So he's going ahead here, building his early six zerglings. Uh, started as queen, he's gonna try to get some trades here. Uh, and it doesn't really put him terribly behind, like it's definitely a, uh, something he can come back from, but it's just not really the optimal build for the situation. So my 14 uh, pool finishes, I start speed, pull two drones off gas, it's pretty standard if you're gonna to try to go for the early uh, speed expand. Um, and so I've gone ahead and scouted these six Zerglings coming across the map, so I know exactly what's about to hit. He's about to realize I didn't actually go hatchery first, so he needs to go ahead, run in here, and try to get as many drone trades as he can. So as you can see right now, I'm at 15 harvesters to 13. Uh, don't end up losing a drone, and he actually lost a Zergling. I, I didn't lose a single one. So I'm in perfect shape here. Earlier speed, uh, quicker expansion timing. Uh, my queen was a bit farther behind, and obviously my zerglings are a bit farther behind, but my economy is ahead, and that's all that really matters, ZVZ, honestly. So he's, you know, goes ahead here, starts his speed. Uh, my speed, well, well uh, faster than his. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and throw down an early baneling nest and put a second drone on gas. Now this is pretty standard. One of the most common follow-ups to a 10 pool is just a 10 pool speedling uh, with uh, baneling. So it's really important that you're able to go ahead, uh, get a baneling nest down, and morph a few quick banelings in order to defend your own expansion. So as is, uh, I still have that three drone lead. My speed is completed, but I see him moving across the map here with a decent amount of zerglings. So I know the second this baneling nest gets up, I need to go ahead and morph a few banelings so that I can go ahead and save my expansion. He's simultaneously expanding himself. So as my baneling nest completes, exactly, that's exactly what I do. Uh, more, few more zerglings. He's able to go ahead and pick up, uh, attack this hatchery here, but I recognize that and I want to try to prevent him from uh, picking off the expansion. I recognize it's going to survive so I don't cancel. And so I can just go ahead and walk forward with these uh, two banelings, force him to sacrifice some zerglings, trying to kill them. His speed still isn't completed, and I'm able to go ahead and re-engage with the banelings. And I've killed uh, a few zerglings and basically lost nothing, and secured a quicker expansion than him. Now even after all that, even after he had uh, sort of the build order disadvantage, he's only uh, you know th uh, three drones behind, which isn't 
too significant here. Uh, his tech's a bit uh, behind mine with that baneling nest. Uh, so he's finally just now able to go ahead and morph some defensive banelings to defend any sort of uh, aggression that I could come at him with. And I'm forced to go ahead and build a spine crawler. You know, just say I'll, I'll go ahead and sacrifice that drone to have a secure expansion. When this, once the spine crawler gets up, Ling Bane spine crawler is very effective and very efficient at defending early Ling Bane pressure because they're not able to just go ahead uh, and A move basically with the banelings. They're really forced to have good control and at the same time if you're really good at controlling your spine crawler at picking off their banelings you can hold off tons and tons of ling baneling. So now that my expansion's up I have my double queen and I feel safe to go ahead and drone because of the spine. Uh, my harvester count is high, skyrocketing at 39 to 24 and I know a lot of people are thinking right now you know with a 15 drone lead uh, you know how can you feel safe you know you, you feel pretty vulnerable to any sort of uh, Ling Bane timings. But, uh, you know, as is, he doesn't actually have a ton of Ling Bane, but even if he did, uh, I, I can't really tell you guys enough how efficient and how effective it is to hold off spine crawler or Ling Bane pressure with spine crawler. And the other thing is, if I have good overlord spread, like uh, I have this game, ZBZ, if I saw 50 Zerglings run down this ramp uh, in order to go ahead and pressure my natural or pressure my third and try to attack it, I already just can take the Zerglings I have, morph them into Banelings, uh, hit a couple Larva Injects, and, and throw out another 20 Zerglings, and I should be able to hold off any sort of timing attack like that very effectively. Timing attacks only start getting extremely difficult to hold off once the Roach ones are completed. So as we can see here, I've started an extremely early third. This is pretty common, ZBZ, because um, either he has the drone count I have, uh, in which case I'm able to just go ahead and fend off this third pretty easily, or he's doing an all-in uh, just to try to kill the third, in which case I can cancel that, get my 300 resources back, uh, and then just fend off the attack uh, on two base and with a drone advantage, no problem. So pretty common, but that's not good going to be the case. I have my uh, third base up here, uh, his third base not too far behind, and I'm really just kind of trying to be aggressive here with some Ling Bane pressure. I want him to sacrifice some Z Banelings, which is exactly what I get. I got him to throw away one Baneling for one Zergling, that's always a good trade. I uh, lost a couple drones there, but I realized once these Roaches are out, there's no more pressure I can really do, and I didn't even dedicate a lot of resources to that. Uh, the reason why you always want to sacrifice a Zergling for a Baneling is obviously just because a Baneling is more expensive. A Baneling is a Zergling that costs you know, 25 more minerals, 24 five more gas. So it's all, always beneficial if you can force them to go ahead and uh, sacrifice that. So I've gone in here once my lair is complete, uh, ran in with this Overseer. I was able to go ahead uh, and scout the Roach Warren, uh, early evolution chamber, third base, and so I can put him uh, 100% on roach timing. I know that because this gas is so late, he's not planning on going any sort of mute attack uh, or anything too tricky, any infestors. He really just wants to build up roach numbers, try to hit a timing, or at least try and hold this third. But over here, once my lair is complete, I actually start uh, a spire. And you'll notice that I'm still upgrading roach uh, range attack. I still have my roach warren. And the reason being is I'm just going for like a seven to eight mutalisk uh, sort of pressure into a roach timing transition. So I'm still starting my roach speed here. Uh, and after these 10 mutalisks have built, I'm just going to be on pure roach production, trying to hold my natural and my third and fend off any timing while trying to do as much damage as possible with these early mutalisks. So he actually did not scout me with an overseer. Uh, so I'm able to go ahead and get out these mutalists undetected until they kill off this uh, overlord. So right now he knows exactly what's going on. He realizes, hey, if he has that many mutalists, I definitely have a roach count advantage. I need to try to take advantage of it while putting down a bunch of spores uh, and just trying to defend my main natural and third to the best of my ability. So I run in here, try to pick off an early queen, I think. Nope. Yeah. Early queen. Um, he's, he's going ahead and engaging down here. Now, even though he has more roaches than me, I have one advantage, and that's the, my rally. My rally is much, much closer to his, or to my base, than you know it is for him to go ahead and continually engage and attack. 
So just, you know, basically forcing in spores here, recognizing that, uh, and then just trying to rally as many roaches over here as possible. Uh, it looks like he's definitely getting the advantage here. Um, so I'm probably forced to go ahead and pull my drones here in a second. Um, and now I'm just focusing on picking off as many overloads as possible. I still have a 20 supply account lead. Uh, and even though I've, uh, he's forced me to stop mining at this third for a bit, uh, you know, I think I'm more than made up for it with the Milos. I have map control. I've been picking off a ton of overlords. I forced four spores here, two here, uh, four here. So, you know, he's lost 10 drones and then the mineral, you know, and then plus minerals uh, just on these uh, mutilists. I forced a tech uh, change by forcing him to go ahead and put down hydros that can actually uh, engage these mutilists. Done some decent amount of damage to picking off extractors. And meanwhile, I'm just going for a roach timing. So, you know, my plus one's uh, already complete. I should actually have started plus two, but it looks like I didn't. Um, and I'm not mining the Vespian geysers here at the third because I recognize that roaches don't really cost a ton of Vespian, and so I don't need a whole lot in order to uh, hit these mass uh, roach production timings. Now, if you look up here at the supply tab, it's a ZVZ, and I'm 179, 180 supply to 141. Uh, roaches are, as I've said before, very supply heavy units, so you always want to try to hit timings before max uh, because any other unit he goes besides Roach is just going to be more supply effective. And I'm really just going to try to uh, spread him out here. I'm able to pick off another Overlord that's going to push him below the supply cap. He's unable to produce at this moment. And I'm going to choose to engage the third over the natural because this choke point is so much smaller than this one. This one really allows me to get up, uh, get the concave, and I'm able to go ahead and surround his force. Now, Hydros tend to be sort of the glass cannons of the Zerg arsenal. They're, very slow, they have very high DPS, but if you don't have a bunch of roaches tanking for them, uh, they're extremely ineffective against roaches. So I'm able to actually just go in here, pick off all of his Hydralis, uh, focusing on killing this extractor with my group of Mutalists, uh, and then just focusing down Overlords. Uh, and I recognize by this point there's nothing he's really going to be able to do to fend off this timing attack. And I force the GG. All right, guys, uh, once again, I am Bryce Machine Bates, Team Evil Geniuses. This has been a replay review. If you guys enjoyed this, uh, just head on over to evilgeniuses.net. You can check out this and many more from myself and fellow EG players. And, uh, well, thank you guys very much.